guys, this is Epifescent Whispers, um, I hope you're all doing okay, and that you're excited for the run up to Christmas, and the winter break, um, I am finishing work in a couple of days, so I'm already more relaxed, because I have been, um, juggling, working full time, and also studying for my masters, um, so it's been very hectic and kind of full on for the past few weeks so it's going to be really nice to kind of sit back and relax and do creative stuff and kind of nap and listen to a lot of ASMR which will be very nice Um, and I hope you guys have nice kind of things planned for your holiday breaks Uh, I am going to do the, um, the Christmas tag that I have seen a few different ASMR artists do. Um, The one that I listen to on a kind of semi-regular basis, it doesn't even have to be, you know, around Christmas time, to be honest, because I love Christmas, so, um, is Britney ASMR. Um, She did a version of it. I can't remember if she was the first one to do it or not. But I love this tag in particular um, because it's Christmas and I love all things Christmas and I, you know, this is my favourite time of the year. Um, so I really wanted to do this for you guys and just to kind of talk about Christmas and everything awesome that there is um, to do with regards to the holidays, particularly over here in the UK. Because there will be stuff that's, you know, if you live in a different part of the world, it'll be hugely, you know, different. Anyway, without further ado, here we go with the ASMR Christmas tag. Okay. Question one. What is your favourite holiday movie? Um, This is a really hard question to answer because... There are loads of films that I would say are like classic Christmas kind of holiday movies. So it's stuff like Miracle on 34th Street. Um, my mum loves the 94 version with um, Richard Attenborough and um, Mara Wilson and Dylan and um, You know, it is great. And then I love the, I think it's 19... I think it's 34, I think it's in the 30s, um, the black and white version, I really love that as well, um, but then it's stuff like the Santa Claus, um, Christmas in Connecticut, if we're going for some kind of black and white deep cut kind of um, Christmas movies, um, It's a Wonderful Life, which I only saw, I think about four or five years ago, I think I was in, um, in university doing my undergrad when I first saw that the first time at Christmas and I watched it completely from beginning to end and by the end I had proper tears in my eyes I thought it was absolutely brilliant I thought it was stunning um, which is weird because if I remember rightly it didn't have a lot of kind of critical success when it first came out people thought it was really kind of you know schmaltzy and you know a bit cheesy and all that sort of thing and I suppose it is but it is a holiday classic now and it is one of those films that everybody you know seems to love or something like that Um, and then you have the films that are kind of set at Christmas and some people think they're Christmas films Um, so you have like Die Die Hard's the one that's mentioned a lot is Die Hard a Christmas film I've watched Die Hard at Christmas, and the first Die Hard is my favourite Die Hard. Um, So, I don't know. I think any excuse to kind of watch it is is perfectly fine. Um, And then you've got films which are kind of related to Christmas, but they're a bit unusual. So, the two examples that I think of when it comes to this... um, Oh no, actually, just going back to, um, you know, the film set at Christmas, there are a series of thil- f- of films, sorry, I can't speak tonight, um, called The Thin Man, and it's like a series, and it's um, about a 
about basically about a married couple in the twenties and thirties, and they're hilarious. They're really funny, really witty. Um, always drinking and all that sort of thing, and they basically end up solving murders, like high society murders. Um, and I think they're brilliant. I always try and watch them around Christmas because the first one, in particular, is set around the Christmas period. Um, and it does have these Christmas overtones, but it's not really a Christmas movie. It's like there's a another movie really like that, which actually got me into the Thin Man, and it's called Lady on a Train, and it's about a socialite um, played by Deanna Durbin, who was like a big, big Hollywood superstar, like in the 20s and 30s, and she basically plays this spoiled but very nice kind of socialite who witnesses a murder on a train, kind of Agatha Christie style, um, and she becomes determined to kind of um, solve the case and you know stop the bad guys and everything, and she ends up roping in this. Um, he's like uh, she loves detective stories, which is why she starts thinking that she can like solve one. Um, and she gets her favourite writer involved, um, who's having troubles with his girlfriend and everything. And so the pair of them end up kind of sneaking around trying to trying to solve this um, this murder, which he doesn't think took place. And he thinks she's either having some kind of breakdown or she's doing it for attention or whatever. Um, and that's really good. I would really recommend it if you get a chance to see it. Um, but yeah, the third character I guess I was talking about was films that are related to Christmas but they're not like not like family movies or anything and the two I'm thinking of there's A Nightmare Before Christmas which is a family film and it is brilliant but then I will happily watch that kind of at Halloween and also at Christmas and pretty much any point between those two holidays as well because it celebrates Halloween and all the spookiness and the scariness and it is quite scary for a kids film and then it also celebrates Christmas as well so I don't know I like to you know if, you, if I can watch it two or three times over as many months when I've got time that's pretty good um and the other that's it the other film or kind of films I'm thinking of are kind of like Christmas horror movies so I love my horror movies, and when I think of Christmas, um, I think of Black Christmas, and I also think recently of Krampus. Um, Krampus is definitely more of a movie about Christmas, um, and if you don't know about it, it's basically um, based on the kind of um, Dark Ages slash... Um, I think it's like 17, 1800s basically it's a central European myth or legend that there's an evil um, like a Christmas demon um, called Krampus and he punishes naughty children um, and because the traditional story obviously of Santa Claus and Saint Nick is that um, they leave coal in your stocking instead of presents if you've been bad Whereas Krampus actually kind of stole the children away and ate them or whatever it is. Um, and this movie which came out, I think it was last year or maybe the year before. It's about a family um, on Christmas Eve. Got like an extended family who come together for the holidays. Um, and it's really tense and nobody really likes each other. And the main, maybe not like the main character but like the protagonist who's this young kid called Max who still sort of believes in Santa. He ends up losing his faith in Santa um, due to kind of his horrible cousins and everything teasing him and ripping up his letter to Santa and everything. Um, and because he loses his faith, then the Krampus demon descends on the town um, and kind of blocks off their neighbourhood. Um, and it's about this family trying to survive and everything. And it's it's quite weird, but it's also quite funny because it's got um. Uh, who's in it? It's got Tony Collette in it, who's really funny. You've got Adam Scott, who is hilarious, and he's in Parks and Rec, and which I love Parks and Rec. Um, and it is—it's just a very weird, very cool kind of Christmas horror movie with a good ending. Um, but then Black Christmas, and I'm talking about the original kind of nineteen. Uh, 
1974 Christmas movie is about a sorority house in America where the girls start, have been getting obscene phone calls from some guy um, and then he starts attacking them and he's basically been living in the house for a few months because he was like I don't know I don't think it actually explains in the original in the remake they did a few years ago which isn't it's not brilliant to be honest they try and explain it that he was like the product of incest or something and it was yeah it's not it's not good Um, but it is a really scary horror movie and like all the great kind of horror movies it does like a slowly kind of unfolding thing um and it is good and i do like to i can happily watch that anytime of year because i don't really associate it with christmas so i don't know i mean um get back to the original question what is my favorite holiday movie i am gonna say um i will go with I don't know. <laughs> That's bad. I should be able to pick a Christmas movie. I will go with the either the original Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street because I do really like that, um, or um, or Nightmare Before Christmas because it is really nice. I do like kind of Tim Burton and all that sort of thing. Okay. Uh. Number two, what is your most remem- memorable um, childhood holiday experience? I don't know, actually. I mean, I come from a... I have a very large kind of extended family. Um, and so I remember some of the childhood holidays we used to have, or childhood Christmases, we used to all kind of, like, get together around someone's house. And back when we were really young, um, and there weren't as many of us, because now a lot of my cousins have obviously spouses and you know our partners and kind of children and um you know all that sort of thing uh it's much we're a much bigger family now as we were older um now i just remember us going around like people's houses and playing and all that sort of thing um i don't know um i remember it snowing for a couple of years um my, I mean, if we're not just saying childhood, like my most uh, rememberable holiday experience is when my my dad and my brother and I planned, like for weeks, like this was a long operation, um, to get our family um, a dog for Christmas. Um, and this was a few years ago, so basically... Um, my mum had not been anti-dog but she'd been like okay well we'll think about it in a few years and then we decided that now was the right time and it, it was it worked out really well um and then we got him a couple of days before christmas like it was the 23rd of december or something um and yeah i always remember that because we had some stuff for christmas and everything but seeing my mum who initially thought we were kidding and that we'd like borrowed it from somebody and then we was going no no no, he's definitely our dog um seeing her fall in love with this um completely in- insane but incredibly sweet and kind-hearted um springer spaniel um was the kind of best christmas if you will um in terms of the joy and all that sort of thing and he is um a delight to this day and my mum loves the bones of him even though sometimes she won't admit it ah, uh, question three what is your favourite holiday food ooh uh, I have quite well, I love food I'm quite a big guy so I do love food uh, I mean chocolate any kind of Christmas chocolate is already going to be quite high up on the list uh, if we're talking specifics though I really like a chocolate panettone um, and if you don't know what a panettone is, it's like an Italian, it's like a domed kind of, I would say bread, but it's not quite, it's like a cross between cake and bread. It's like a very soft bread. Um, 
and it's delicious, it's completely delicious, but I don't eat like the fruit version or anything, so me and my dad always get like a chocolate one, not a massive one, but we do eat it, and it is really nice, with like, on Christmas morning, you just have like a piece of it with some tea or whatever, um, and then... Um, for like Christmas dinner, I love the whole Christmas dinner experience. I think it's brilliant. I wish we could have it more often, but then I think if you did, you'd lose its kind of uh, appeal, its kind of Christmasiness. Um, I just realised as I'm saying this that I'm recording this, and it is exactly a week until Christmas Day. So I'm recording this seven, like a week before Christmas Eve, or a week on Christmas Eve. Uh, but no, in the UK we have pigs and blankets, which I don't know if they're a thing, like, elsewhere, and they're the best, they're like little chipolata sausages wrapped in bacon, and they're so good, um, and then obviously there's the turkey, and I quite like turkey, and potatoes, and, oh, it's just, it's so good, it's such a good meal, and all the vegetables are awesome, and yeah. I love it, and then obviously there's stuff like, you know, cake and sweets and nibbly stuff as well, so, I do, Christmas is is not a great time for my um, ever-expanding waistline, but it is a wonderful time for my taste buds. Uh, question four, what is your favourite holiday song and or album? Well, I can answer the album one fairly quickly, and that is, and I only found it, um, I don't think last year, I think the year before, um, and I was thrilled because this lady is one of my favourite, favourite, favourite ever artists, um, and she always has a place in my heart, and it's Ella Fitzgerald, um, who I fell in love with on a plane many years ago when I heard her through the little, um, entertainment channels, and I was like, who's this? She's incredible, I absolutely love her. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I found out she did a Christmas album called um, Ella Wishes You a Swinging Christmas, and it is the best Christmas album I have ever listened to. And it's basically Ella doing these really upbeat, kind of swing and jazz infused covers of um, Frosty the Snowman and We Freak Kings, and Oh, it's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. I love it so much. And then there's like contemporary albums, more like um, like Kelly Clarkson did a really good album called Wrapped in Red a couple of years ago. Um, Leona Lewis, who's a British singer, she won the British version of The X Factor over here about ten, about ten years ago. She did a version called... Uh, I don't know actually, I think it might be called like Christmas with Love or something like that, um, and that was pretty good as well. Uh, with regards to individual songs though, I am actually, as I'm speaking, I have a special Christmas playlist on my iPod because I cannot remember all my favourite Christmas songs, so I'm just going to read a few of my iPod. Uh, let's see what we've got. So, um... There is All I Want for Christmas is New Year's Day by Hertz, and they're a kind of synth pop, like, they sound like 80s stuff, and I love that song because it's a really alternative Christmas song about the worst Christmas of your life leading to the best New Year's Day, and all about new beginnings and, you know, hope and everything, because once it can get a bit depressing kind of after the Christmas season, and going into January and everything. I mean, I quite like January because my birthday is then. But I understand people because it's gloomy and dark and cold and all that sort of thing. And it's quite uplifting. And it is a really good song. I would strongly recommend you check that out. Uh, there's Christmas Lights by Coldplay, which is a good song. Uh, Leona Lewis, who I just mentioned. Uh, the lead single off the album is called One More Sleep. Which I think a lot of people were expecting to be like, oh, it's just, it's a bit disposable and everything. And now, weirdly, it's become, so it's on its way to kind of modern classic. Because it is quite good and it's got a really catchy chorus. Um, Carly Minogue's Every Day is Like Christmas, which is really nice. It's a very sweet kind of soaring song. And I love Kylie, so that's awesome. Uh, the 
So Kelly Clarkson's Wrapped in Red, there's a few songs from there, so she does a really good um, emotional, very stark kind of version of Oh Come, Oh Come Emmanuel, which is really good. Um, and she covers my favourite singer of all time, who is Imogen Heap, with Just For Now, which is an alternative kind of holiday song about families fighting over like trivial stuff at Christmas and then coming together. And it was originally written for the OC, I think, um, or was ri- or was kind of first premiered in the OC, um, and it's really good. Uh, Ariana Grande, Love Is Everything, which is, she did a Christmas EP a few years ago, and I quite liked that, um, that particular song, because it's quite, it's like Jingle Bells and stuff in it, it's good. Uh, she and Him, who that is, I don't know the guy, but the girl in it is Zoe Deschanel from, like, New Girl and Elf, um, and their Christmas album, and I've got the, um, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, uh, I have Imogen Heaps, just for now, which is epic, uh, Frank Sinatra, Let It Snow, which is, oh, it's so good, uh, Staying Over Day, E17, I don't, I think this is a British specific thing, but Staying Over Day is... It's a Christmas song that isn't really a Christmas song, but it is a Christmas song. And it's a, it sounds silly saying that, but if you ever listen to it, you know what I mean. It's a song about um, kind of being in bed or being with the person that you love and they're leaving for whatever reason and you're just saying, please, just stay. Stay another day and all that sort of thing. So it's a little bit like Baby It's Cold Outside, but it's more kind of emotionally raw and it's very soaring and very dramatic and it is brilliant uh, everybody's favourite and my mum's favourite favourite song is All I Want For Christmas Is You by Mariah Carey which I think regardless of your kind of pop culture taste you, you, you know the song, you like the song it is a, it is a Christmas classic uh, Santa Baby, Eartha Kitt um, I love Eartha Kitt I didn't really know much about her apart from the uh, the song Santa Baby when I was a kid and um, kind of recently I've been listening to more stuff of hers and I'm like oh she's she's really cool and hearing stories about her I was like oh that's really cool uh, the entire pretty much of the Ella Fitzgerald album so the stuff on there like Winter Wonderland Rudolph uh, The Red Nose Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman Jingle Bells, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. White Christmas, We Three Kings. Um, one song that isn't actually on my playlist that I've just remembered is Greg Lake, who sadly passed away a few weeks ago. Um, and that is I Believe in Father Christmas, which has the most beautiful kind of last 60 seconds of a Christmas song I've ever heard because it's all these kind of jubilant choirs harmonising. I just that's it is beautiful. If I could like make music, if I was musically talented, I would try and create pop music with that kind of sound. Where it sounds like you know, the world's singing and everything's good. So uh what else is there? Oh yeah, so there's Melanie Thornton, which is a wonderful dream. Um which is I how I think if I remember this rightly, it's the um, song that's used in the Coca-Cola advert, you know, the Christmas advert with the trucks that everybody loves. Um, and they use it, I believe, because Melanie Thornton sadly died in a plane crash when it was like two, it was a few years ago, it was like 2001, I think. Probably wrong. Um, but they use it in kind of, not as a, no, kind of in tribute, yeah, but it's also like an iconic song. Um, and it's beautiful and everything. Um, and then finally, it is. It's a song that I've been listening to a lot recently, which I l- love because I've been getting into a bit of new wave music. And it's uh, Christmas Wrapping by the Waitresses, which is brilliant. It's such a good Christmas song. Um, <laughs> if you haven't listened to it, then please, please do. Um, and there's tons of songs I like as well. So there's like. Um, <sighs> There's a song, not when I say Mel and Kim, it's Mel. Uh, his name is Mel Stewart, Mel Harvey. I think he's a comedian or something. Um, 
and then Kim from the band Mel and Kim, and they do a Christmas song, and I can't, honestly can't remember what the name of it is. Oh, Rockin' Around, uh, Rockin' Around. Yeah, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to sing that <laughs> bit in my head. Um, but yeah, I love Christmas music. If I had to pick only one Christmas song, uh, at the moment it's a tie between I Believe in Father Christmas by Greg Lake, by um, Late Snow by Ella Fitzgerald, and uh, Christmas Wrapping by The Waitresses. Uh, question five What is your favourite smell or scent of the holiday season? I love cinnamon. Um, I'm not a big ginger fan. I don't mind it, but I'm not one of these people who like. I don't like really like gingerbread or anything like that. Um, but right about this time, because I love to bake, so I use a lot of cinnamon. I quite like peppermint. I quite like mint. I think it's a great smell. Uh, recently, in like a lot of coffee shops where I've been doing studying and meetings and all that sort of thing, they've been offering a lot of kind of spiced orange, which is quite nice, or salted caramel, which is really good. Um, uh, I, well, as silly as it sounds, um, as I'm recording this, I have a candle burning because it's quite dark and I, and I don't want lights on or anything. Um, and it's the uh, Yankee Candle Christmas Cookie, which is probably my favourite like Yankee Candle smell because I love sweet stuff. So that might have to be that might have to be like my favourite candle scent for the holiday season in particular. Uh, question six, have you ever peeked at your gifts? No, not that I think of. I mean, I've definitely, like, had a look. Because when we were kids, my mum used to hide them because I was such an inquisitive, nosy kid. Um, and I never tried to, like, unwrap them or anything, but I used to, if I'd hold it and I'd be like, okay, what's, what's this kind of work out? But I never, like, tried to unwrap them or anything like that. Um, and now as an adult, I mean, if I have the time... <laughs> I'm I'm more I'm I'm aware of like okay I'll appreciate it, not knowing. So no. Question seven: Do you have favorite holiday traditions? If so, what are they? Um, in the past few years, we've set up a few holiday traditions that are quite nice. Uh, well, one that's been coming, um, pretty much ever since we were kids is that on Christmas Eve, me and my family get a takeaway. Um. Which is nice, I think it's just like a little treat really. Um, and it's good. So like for the past few years we've got like pizza or if it's like Chinese food or something like that on Christmas Eve. Um we used to go to like a Christingle at a local church, but I don't think they do it anymore because I think I just don't think a lot of people go, which is a real shame. Um I love going to midnight mass. I'm not really super, super religious in any sense, but there is something about Midnight Mass that I love. It feels like you're connecting to something kind of bigger than yourself and more potent and omnipotent than yourself, even if it's not, you know, even if it's bigger than one faith or religion or anything like that. So I I do, I love that. And then sometimes I do the Christmas morning service as well because I actually just quite like singing Christmas carols. Um, I used to go Christmas caroling for a bit when I was um, kind of mid teenage range, um, and I do. And it was it was really nice. Um, I'm not a good singer whatsoever, but I can kind of sing joyfully quite well, which is all you really need at Christmas and all you really need in real life. Let's be honest. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything really on Christmas Day. Um, we do make an effort to go see my my mum's mum's and my grandma on Christmas Eve. Um, so we try and like, because we don't really go. We used to go see her on Christmas Day, um, but because, as I mentioned, you know, I've got really big extended family, and you know, it could be. Um, it is really hectic and everything. Um, it's easier just to kind of give her the presents, cards, chat with her, you know, all that sort of thing um, on Christmas Eve, and then kind of have Christmas Day as just like our immediate family, um, which is nice. And I'm gonna, Mitch, you won't be listening to this, I don't think. I'm gonna bake her like a little surprise cake 
um, and take it to either on Christmas Eve or the day before because um, it will keep because it's basically like a, a bun cake um, and it's going to be really nice question 8 are you on the naughty or nice list I am pretty much from birth I've always been on the nice list I'm not really a I mean, it sounds like such a boring thing, like, oh, I've never been naughty or whatever, but I really haven't. Um, I can be quite sarcastic. Um, and there are definitely times when I think I've been really selfish or something, but I... No, I think, by and large, my parents raised me really well to be, like, a good person. Um, and that's certainly not saying that I'm perfect. I'm really not. I'm got huge flaws and everything like that but I do always try and do the right thing um, and I do try and help others whenever I can or put others needs ahead of mine so yeah I, I think I'm on the nice list I haven't had any call telling me otherwise so question nine what are you looking forward to most this holiday season um it's gonna be a weird one this year because my mum is um, she's a nurse and she's working night shifts which means that we won't actually see much of her on Christmas Day so we're not actually having Christmas Day dinner until Boxing Day and so we're switching the Boxing Day kind of because we have like a little buffet thing we're doing that on Christmas Day instead so it'll be a little bit weird this year um, but I'm still looking forward to kind of spending time at home and relaxing and spending time with my family and just doing Christmassy stuff um, having the breaks the main thing um, which is going to be really nice but I'm looking forward to seeing what people think of the presents I bought them because um, I love Christmas shopping I am I am that annoying person who has like a Christmas plan and everything um, and I hope that I get them the you know good gifts or the right gifts and that sort of thing so that'll be nice um yeah question 10 can you name all of santa's reindeer i'm gonna try because i saw buzzfeed ask will smith this yesterday and he did it really well so i will try and remember so it's on dasher on dancer on prancer and vixen on Comet, on Cupid, on Donna and Blitzen, and then it's Rudolph, I think. Okay. Someone please let me know if it's not the case, because I'm not going to cheat and, like, Google it, just in case. Uh, question 11. If you put up a tree, do you prefer fake or real? I quite like a fake tree. <laughs> um, which I know will anger some tree purists out there, but... Um, as I mentioned, we have a dog who is quite enthusiastic and I'd much rather deal with a fake tree, which is much simpler than having to worry about a real one and like pine needles dropping all over the house and everything. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I the tree we've got at the moment um, is a fibre optic tree, so when we plug it in, it you know glows colours and it's really nice and I, I love it. I think it's great. I'm not a huge. I'm not. I'm not one of those people who really cares whether the tree's real or not. It's not that big of a deal for me. Um, I do like a tree, and I think I'd be a bit sad if I didn't have a Christmas tree in you know my home. But you know, I'd rather have a fake one, and it's it. It takes a lot of kind of time and pressure and worry off my off my head than. Um, then, uh, you know, get a real one to kind of keep up with the Joneses. Uh, question 12. Are you a pro present rapper or do you fail miserably? I don't like to pick myself up, but I'm a pretty good kind of present rapper. Not like with everything. If it's particularly weirdly shaped, then I will be honest, it's going to come out a little bit dodgy. But... Um, I think it's, yeah, I think I'm pretty good. I'm pretty competent, I suppose is the best word, or proficient. Um, and I think what helps in my household is I, qu I find it quite relaxing. So, like, I will I will spread out on the floor and use the floor as, like, the perfect kind of flat surface. 
and I'll either put like the TV on or I'll put like music on as like some kind of background noise because I can't rap in silence. You know, if it's Christmas music, great. If I'm watching TV, great as well. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty comfortable and kind of confident in doing it. Question thirteen: Have you ever had a white Christmas? Uh, we did as kids. Uh, we haven't had one recently because, I mean, the past two years it hasn't really been cold enough. Um, and then suddenly it's become very cold, kind of New Year's, January, February. Um, but yeah, I think we had one as, as a kid. Um, I, can't, I couldn't tell you when though, I could not remember what age. Um, I think I was still playing with Power Rangers then, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I've had a white Christmas and it was nice and we like went out and played for a bit in it and then it was really cold so we came back inside uh question 14 where do you plan on spending your holiday i am spending my holiday uh at home with my immediate family um which is really nice um occasionally well as I explained we used to kind of go out with like an extended family and everything but then kind of around i think i must have been like nine or ten they realized it was just getting too big for one person so it was like we'll meet up in the morning at my maternal grandparents do presents do kind of chat and all that sort of thing that carried on for quite a few years afterwards um, until i was about 20 um and then one year, randomly, we spent it with some family fr- family friends of ours, which was nice. Um, but now we, uh, as a family unit, I suppose we're quite introverted in the sense that we don't really, we're quite comfortable uh, and happy in each other's company. So like Christmas Day, ideally, when my mum isn't working or sleeping or anything like that, we do just spend it with each other. Uh, we do take, like as a family, we do take the dog out to the park and everything so we can get a run um and you know throw a ball about so he looks like a little fool um but yeah just spend it at home with the family um and it's gonna be amazing and finally question 15 what is your favorite thing about the holiday season um i don't know i mean i i truly love this time of year i think it's brilliant i mean i'm particularly weird i love the cold weather like i've been a little bit annoyed this past week because it has been fairly mild for december so i haven't been able to kind of bring out the christmas apparel as much i haven't been able to bring out the christmas jumpers because otherwise i will just roast um i don't know i suppose i quite like i mean the thing at the heart of it is i get to spend time with my family i get to relax and unwind i get to show my family and friends loved ones how much i care about them with gifts and i know it's not the material stuff but it's nice to be able to give them something tangible as well something that says i know about your interests and i listen to them and i have put thought and kind of effort into this gift this material thing and it doesn't have to cost a lot. I'm not someone who really thinks that you need to be spending, you know, hundreds of pounds or even, you know, a, a significant chunk of money on a single gift for someone. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I love everything, to be fair. I love the movies, the music, the food, the weather. Um, you know, people like, you know, people dressing up in Christmas jumpers or. Oh, um, TV, like the holiday specials, I love them, the decorations, the tree, wrapping presents, I, I I love everything, I am one of the biggest kind of Christmas fanatics or Christmas nerds um, that I know, um, and it's not to say that I kind of obsess about it every year, but I think I, I, I'm comfortable enough to admit that you know once it hits kind of like once it hits the first of november i am in full on christmas mode i am like yep 
give me some of that that hot chocolate let me put my christmas hat on and let's get this done um yeah i do i just i love everything about kind of christmas and this time of year in particular to be honest it's not really kind of holiday specific it's the idea of someone said it really well and I can't think of it was but it was the idea that in the coldest darkest time of year that we come together um, to bring each other kind of light and food and warmth and friendship and love and all that sort of thing um, and it's something that happens kind of the world over regardless of whatever religion or kind of belief you have and I think that's really nice so yeah anyway um i hope you've enjoyed this um as much as i have kind of rambling on about christmas and everything um and i hope that my kind of obnoxious love for christmas hasn't made you kind of want to you know throw throw your crackers in the fire or you know decide you're never gonna celebrate christmas again or anything like that um this will probably be my kind of last ASMR for this year because I do want to get it out before Christmas otherwise I'm just going to have to save it again for next year um, so because I will probably be speaking to you guys before uh, 2017 I want to wish you guys um, a very merry holiday season whatever you decide to do with it so if you celebrate Hanukkah, which I know starts on Christmas Eve this year, or if you do celebrate Christmas or Kwanzaa or you know, even if you're you know, you're not religious and you just like celebrating like the winterval or the winter break or anything, I hope that it is full of kind of light and love and sleep and you know, a world and rest for all of you because you really have had well, we all really have had a um, a trying, uh, in some places, very dark year. And I think that we're all kind of deserving of that respite um, and that recuperation and that time to heal and to kind of enter 2017 um, in order to be our best selves and to kind of move forward. So I really hope that you get that and I really hope that you are able to do that kind of over this festive season so this has been Effervescent Whispers um, and I wish you nothing more and nothing less than love and a very very happy holidays and a wonderful 2017